A massive thank you for clicking on my video. Today I am going to show you how I created my first ever children's book in just 10 simple steps. My name is Kirsten Lee Goldie and I am a professional artist and also the author and illustrator of the children's book series Tales of Huckleberry Hedge. Tutorials and videos just like this one helped me massively when I began writing and illustrating my children's book. So I really hope that even one person watching this video can take away some useful advice or tips. Each stage of this video will be broken down into numbered steps, including research, concept, plot, writing, mood boards, characters, thumbnails, final illustrations, printing and publishing, and lastly, selling. So let's get started. To begin my research, I collected various children's books from local charity shops nearby. These are a great way to gather inspiration for the type of book you'd like to write and are also a super easy way to take note of front and back cover layouts. Now this is where you begin to plan out your book and any meanings or messages you'd like it to highlight. Once again, looking through other books can be a massive guide when it comes to this, but please always remember to never copy someone else's storyline or illustrations. They are used for inspiration purposes only. You have the freedom and the talent to create a book that is unique to you and that's what's going to make it so special. Childhood books are always a massive part of people's memories as they grow up. Just like this book here, almost 20 years old, my twin sister and I scribbled our names in it when we were four. My mum used to read to us every night like clockwork. So to this day, I hold so many happy memories when thinking back to my childhood books. Ask yourself, what happens in my story? This is a stage that you want to make thorough notes of the storyline. For example, when I was writing my first ever book, The Little Light, I knew I wanted to do a nighttime book. So focusing on that theme and the fact that children are commonly afraid of the dark, I knew I wanted my book to hold a valuable meaning, which was stepping out of your comfort zone and facing fears. I then took my initial idea and broke it down into pre-climax, climax and the conclusion. Once I had gathered all of my notes, I began writing my story. I have always loved rhyming books, so I knew I wanted to write in complete rhymes. I find that children tend to pick up words a lot quicker when they rhyme with the previous sentence, just like how easy it is to remember a catchy song. Plus, rhymes and poetry are always so much more fun to write. At this stage, you also want to keep in mind the audience and the age group that you're writing for. Now, if you don't already have a Pinterest account, this is your sign to get one. As an illustrator, it can be hard trying to envision your entire book when starting from scratch. So I personally love to create mood boards on Pinterest to help fuel that inspiration we all need at times. As my book The Little Light was themed purely around nighttime, I gathered a bunch of dreamy night sky themed images onto my board. There are so so many amazingly talented artists on Pinterest. And again, none of their work should ever be copied, just used purely for inspiration purposes. Here I've included a rough collage of my nighttime themed mood board. Ask yourself, how many characters are in my book? When writing, what did I describe them like? Do they have different personalities? These are some great questions to help shape the look of your characters. As my illustrations tend to be digital, I used Procreate on my iPad to bring my characters to life. Now luckily for me, I had already illustrated all four of my book characters the year previous to writing my books. At the time, I had initially illustrated a lot of different animals for fun and practice. But once I had started my book creation process, I knew that these four animals would be the perfect forest friends. And that's how my four main characters became Dumpling the Deer, Huckle the Highland Cow, Orchard the Owl and Fig the Fox. Now this was something that I learned during my time in college. Thumbnails are basically little boxes where you sketch out your ideas. I like to number the boxes to each book page to help keep it somewhat organised. Remember, thumbnails don't have to be tidy, it is only you who needs to understand what and where everything is in your book, so you can go ahead with your final illustrations easily. As I said before, Procreate is my main tool when it comes to illustrations. I find the images so much more clean, crisp and colourful when done digitally and I find that creating and sending PDF or PNG files is a lot easier too. 
This is where your thumbnail sketches come into play, as a sketch like this can turn into this. And even with thumbnails like this one, which is super simple and basic, it is still the foundation of that final detailed illustration that turns out like this. As a personal choice, I designed my front and back covers last as I wanted to get a feel of the entire book's theme when it was complete, so I could mirror that on the covers too. Now that your book is complete, you will need to purchase an ISBN and barcode for the back cover. As I live in the UK, I use the Nielsen UK ISBN agency where you can register your book and purchase an ISBN. If you plan on selling your books, a barcode can be generated using your registered ISBN at www.bolker.com. Now that your book pages are all complete, it's time to save them as a PDF file. You can find the export options along the top of the screen here, where you can add the page to your selected file. Always make sure that your canvas size is the same as your book dimensions. For example, my illustrations are saved at 8 by 11 inches, and so is my physical book copy. Also remember and save your artwork with a minimum of 300 dpi as this helps with the image quality when printing. You can now send your book files off to your chosen printing company. The feeling of receiving your first ever book in the post is so rewarding. But finding the right printing company for you may need a few trials and errors before that feeling can be found. Unfortunately, the first time I received my book, the pages were all mixed up, the colours were dull and the paper quality was just so poor it reduced me to tears. But after switching to a different company, I received the most perfect bound books, with amazing thick glossy pages and bright happy colours, just like I had envisioned. I am now absolutely over the moon with the quality of my books and it taught me another lesson in the challenge that is self-publishing. If, like me, you also live in the UK, then another thing to remember is that it is a legal requirement to send your finished book to the British Library within one month of publication. I have included the postal address on screen that your book should be sent to. In the package, you should include a copy of your book, the publication date, your full name and address so that they can send you a letter of acknowledgement. A great way to get your books noticed is through social media. I have accounts with TikTok, Instagram, Facebook and now YouTube. My books are sold within various shops in the UK. A list of my current stockists can be found on my website. My books are also sold at local Scottish markets by my amazing dad, who has always been my number one supporter and loves to explain every last detail of the books to potential customers. Merchandise is also a fantastic way of getting your book out there and helping to push sales. We now currently offer plush toys of the Huckleberry Hedge characters, tumblers, notebooks, tea towels, coasters, t-shirts, bookmarks and so much more. A lot of people will purchase the merchandise and decide to come back for the books as they've grown fond of the cute characters on the products. I have now self-published three books starting with Tales of Huckleberry Hedge, The Little Light. As this was my first ever book, I wanted it to reflect that cosy nighttime feeling that my mum gave me when she would read my bedtime stories when I was little. The story follows the four forest friends as they stay up past their bedtime to see what the night time will bring. Even though they are anxious and scared, they work together to step out of their comfort zones. They find beauty in the night sky as they begin stargazing together. It teaches children the importance of trying something new and the magic that it can bring. Tales of Huckleberry Hedge Cuddling Clouds is my second book of the series. It shows Huckle the Highland Cow feeling sad and confused when he notices an odd looking cloud in the sky that doesn't fit in. Huckle feels like this cloud, as though he's so much more different from his friends. Fig, Orchard and Dumpling then work together to show Huckle how truly special he is. This book teaches children that everybody is perfect in their own way and we're all equal no matter what. Tales of Huckleberry Hedge, Thistlethorns and Thunderstorms is my third book of the series. It follows all four forest friends as they venture through Huckleberry Hedge, planning to have their picnic on the highest hill. They are hit with many challenges along the way. Thorny forests, striking thunderstorms and shocking floods. But with determination and hard work, they work through all of the problems and reach the perfect spot on top of the hill where they triumphantly stuff their faces with sandwiches, pastries and cakes. This book teaches children how important it is to never give up and that no matter how many challenges life throws at you, you will always find a way through. All of my books are available on my website at www.legaldeart.com. 
I really hope this video has helped give at least a small bit of advice on your journey to becoming a published author. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to creating many more videos just like this one in the near future. Make sure to check out my social media and website too. Thank you so much again for watching and I'll hopefully be back with another video really soon.